This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Look in a boys' yeshiva, but you're much better behaved, so that's, you got that going for you, Baruch Hashem. So the first thing is, it's Chodesh Adar. So everybody needs to smile, everyone should be happy. Of course, Mishanech Nes Adar Marben Besimcha. It's actually very interesting. The Gemara tells us that when Haman was coming on that fateful day, when he had this brainstorm that he's going to hang Mardachai, so the Pasuk says, the king didn't know who was in the courtyard. He was very surprised, it's the middle of the night. The king says, who's in the courtyard? And Haman's coming. And Haman says, you know, I have this great idea. And Achishosh interrupts him. You know, there's somebody who I need to honor. I, for, I think I forgot to honor someone. And Haman says, well, probably he's referring to me. So why don't you let him ride the royal horse and wear the royal clothing? And Achishosh says, great idea. Take the horse, take the clothing. Do that to Mordechai. Do everything. So Haman goes running to Mordechai. And what's Mordechai doing when Haman comes? The Gemara says in Megillah, Mordechai was in the middle of davening. And the Gemara says five words that are almost impossible to understand. He waited until Mordechai finished davening. Why would Haman wait until Mordechai finished davening? After all, Haman is not a big fan of Shachris Mincha Amarev. He should have interrupted him in his spot. Say, ah, go, come on, I have to give you a haircut, I have to put on the royal clothing. Why did he wait for him to finish davening? Says Ben Eshchai and Ben Yoyada. Haman understood that right now Mordechai thinks the Jewish people are going to be annihilated, chas v'shalom. So he's davening mitoch tsar. He's davening in pain. And davening in pain is not so effective. This was a tremendous chiddush to me. It's not so effective as if you daven in happiness and joy. If I'm going to tell him that I'm going to parade him on the royal horse, then he's going to be happy. He may start davening again. Or he may continue where he's up to. And now his tefillah will be tefillah mitoich simcha. And you cannot compare tefillah out of joy to tefillah out of tsar. You see, I always thought if someone is broken hearted, someone is distressed, someone is in pain, that's the highest form of tefillah. No, it's not. A much greater, higher form of tefillah is tefillah mitoich simcha. Haman was afraid that if he would tell Mordechai the good news, Haman, Mordechai would daven in happiness. Tefillah from happiness is the most effective possible tefillah. And this perhaps is one of the reasons why Purim is such a powerful day. You know, we get very caught up in all the mitzvahs that we need to do, and of course we should be very involved in all the mitzvahs. But there's a certain opportunity on Purim that we have that we don't have any other time of the year. And that is, there's a concept that just like on Purim, whoever sticks out their hand, we give them tzedakah. We don't scrutinize, we don't look so carefully. We give to every ani, so too that is the way Hashem is with us. Whatever word we daven for on Purim, Hashem doesn't scrutinize as carefully as He would the rest of the year. The power of tefillah on Purim is so great, there's a concept called Hapoy Sheit Yad Noisnenlai. Whatever we ask for, it could be very effective. And perhaps the reason is, this is not like davening any other time of the year, maybe when we're distressed and we're in pain and we have something that's bothering us. This is tefillah mitoich simcha. That's the highest form of tefillah. I'm very honored that I was asked to speak again this year. But it's always easier to speak the first year than the second year, because the first year you could, you know, use your best material. But this year, maybe we have even better material, but I never shared this yet. But Basiata Dishmaya, this is a very important and powerful information. I want to share with you what Purim means to me personally. I had a grandfather, Haram Mordechai Leib Gladstein, who passed away two years ago at 106 years old. 
He was a Holocaust survivor. He was in all the dark places. He saw Amalek. He saw Eichmann. Eichmann is like, you know, he saw Dr. Mengele. He saw the real Hamans. He was in the crematoria. He was in the gas chamber and he was pulled down in the last second. And when my grandparents survived, my grandmother was the daughter of the last Rav of Sachachav. And my grandfather, my grandmother, they met after the war. They don't know when they were born. My grandfather knew that his bris milo was around Purim time, so he's named Mordechai. My grandmother didn't know at all when she was born. So they always celebrated their birthday on Purim. Every Purim we would call my grandparents and we'd say, Zaydi and Bubi, happy birthday. Freilchen Purim, happy birthday. Why? They were saved from Haman. They were saved from Amalek. So their birthday is Purim. So I always used to imagine, you know, when my grandfather saw the gas chambers, it's like he saw the Eitz Gavoya Chamishamama. And when he was saved and liberated, for him that was his personal Purim. But there's one particular incident that my grandfather recorded that was always very frightening to me. And when he was in Auschwitz, Eichemann invited a special guest to Auschwitz. Who was that guest? The Mufti from Jerusalem. The Mufti was the leader of the Arabs in Palestine at the time. And Eichemann and the Mufti sat together, arm in arm, and they paraded Jews in front of them. And I cannot tell you the type of torture that they inflicted on the Yidden that passed in front of them. I can't even allude to it. It's not for... Not for general audience. But, my grandfather wrote in his memoirs that when Eichmann and the Mufti got together, it was a fulfillment of when Esav got really angry at Yaakov Avina. Does anybody remember the end of Parshas Taldais? When Esav got really angry at Yaakov Avinu, Vayistoim Esav Yaakov, what does the Pasuk say? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you brought in Yishmael. Because the Pasuk says, what did he do? Vayelech el Yishmael. Excellent. He went, he went to join up with Yishmael. Isn't that interesting? That Esav, when he got really angry with Yaakov Avinu, he wanted to join up with Yishmael. And I was wondering, why did my grandfather say that when Eichemin joined up with the Mufti, that was a fulfillment or a replica of when Esav joined up with Yishmael. And many years later I saw the Vilna Gaon wrote a Kabbalistic commentary on something called Safra Ditzni Are you ready for this? The Gra writes that if Esav and Yishmael would ever join forces, they would destroy the world. So now my grandfather was saying, if you want to get a picture of what the world will look like when Esav and Yishmael join forces... That's the image of Auschwitz. You want to know what Auschwitz is? Eichmann and the Mufti. Esav and Yishmael. That's why when Esav got angry at Yaakov, he said, I'm going to marry Yishmael's daughter. The product of Esav and Yishmael is Amalek. That's what the Gra writes. And recently I saw Rav David Kohn. Rav David Kohn is a Rav in Flatbush. He wrote many, many, many Svarim. He writes, if you want to understand what happened on Purim, Let's study this for a moment. Who is Achashverosh? What nation does he come from? This comes from Paras. comes from Persia. The Maral always writes, Persia is Yishmael, which is really remarkable because the Gemara says throughout Shas, the last nation standing will either be Paras or Edoim. And you wonder, Paras? Paras fell many centuries ago. No, but Paras refers to Yishmael. So Achashverosh is Yishmael. And who is Haman? Haman is Esav. You want to know what happens when Achashverosh and Haman get together? You have a Gezeira, Lehashmid, Laharoi, Guliabed. So it's frightening. Three times in Jewish history, Esav and Yishmael join forces. You have Esav literally marrying Yishmael's daughter. You have Achashverosh and Haman. And you have 
Hitler the Muf- and the Mufti, Eichmann and the Mufti. So Baruch Hashem, in the world we live in today, the, the Western world doesn't get along with the, our cousins, the Yishmaelim. But look at what a bracha that is. Understand how important it is that there are these two forces in the world, Esav and Yishmael, and the two can never get together. Okay? Now, everything I just said, put it aside, because we're segueing into a brand new topic, but we're going to come back to it in the end. Let's talk about Shoshana Yaakov. You can't have Purim without Shoshana Yaakov. And whatever you sing, my favorite Shoshana Yaakov is Ben Sion Schenker's Shoshana. I won't see the whole thing, but that's, that's the best Shoshana Yaakov. Shoshana Yaakov. Visa Amecha. It's very good. It's very beautiful. But the classic Shoshana Yaakov. Shoshana Yaakov. Okay, so let's examine some of the words. Number one, Shoshana. A rose. What's a rose got to do with anything? I would go with tulip. My personal favorite is an orchid. Orchid is a real winner. They last much longer. Why not? Orchid, Yaakov, Talavisa, Amecha. Why Shoshana? Why a rose? Number two, Yaakov. How many times in Chumash are the Jewish people called Yaakov? Zero. What's Yaakov? We're called Bnei Yisrael. Maybe one time we're called Kehilas Yaakov. But why all of a sudden in the, in the miracle of Purim we're called Yaakov? And then here's the phrase we really have to pay attention to. Teshu'asam hayisa lanetzach. The salvation of Purim was eternal. What do you mean it was et- eternal? What, Pesach wasn't eternal? Chanukah wasn't eternal? What is eternal about Purim that other salvations were not eternal? Why the emphasis? Teshu'asam hayisa lanetzach. That's a different one. Okay, that's... Yehuda Green, sorry. I know a little music. Of course, not from myself, but you know, I also have kids who went to TMM. Their salvation was eternal. What is eternal about Purim? The Medrash tells us something astounding. The Medrash says on the Pasuk, Vimei ha Purim layavru mitaycha Yehudim vezichram layosuf mizaram. The Medrash says, "Call Hayamim Toivim Asidim Libatel." When you may have Purim, Enam Betelam La'Olam. The Medrash says, "All the Yamim Toivim will become Batel, but Purim will never become Batel." Now that's good with me. I'm happy that Purim will always exist. The problem with the Medrash, and this is raised by the Rashba in the Chuvas, is that how could the Medrash say that all the Yamim Toivim will become Batel? We know one of the Yud Gimel Ikrim, one of the thirteen principles of faith. That it is our emuna, the Torah will never change, it will never be modified, it will never, not one missing letter will ever occur to the Torah. How could the Medrash say Purim will stand forever and the other Yom and Taivim will become Batal? What? When Mashiach comes, we're not going to celebrate Pesach, we're not going to celebrate Shavuos, we're not going to celebrate Sukkot. What does it mean all the Yamim Toivim will become Batal? The Maharal presents the following amazing approach to understand. What do Chazal mean that all the Yamim Toivim will become Batal and Purim will never become Batal? So not only is Purim approaching, but Pesach is approaching as well. We're going to stay up very late Pesach night and we're going to talk about all the miracles of Yitzias Mitzrayim. By the way, a very nice remez. You know, you have a shita that there were ten miracles in Mitzrayim and forty al hayam or fifty al hayam. Another opinion is fifty miracles in Mitzrayim, two hundred al hayam, and so forth. If you add up all of the various possible miracles that occurred in Mitzrayim, all the miracles in Mitzrayim, all the miracles al Hayam, including the Tzach Hadash B'Yachav, Svasema says, 613 Nisan. It's a lot of miracles. If you ask most people, the night of the Seder, what am I remembering? What am I focusing on? Oh, most people would say, 
Something happened 3,300 years ago, and we're remembering all the great miracles Hashem brought, 3,300 miracles. That is not at all what Yitzhiya Mitzrayim is about. Actually, the Navi tells us, Ki eretz Mitzrayim arenu neflois. Yitzhiya Mitzrayim was dress rehearsal, was a practice run. Every single miracle that happened in Mitzrayim will happen again. In the times of the Gula Hasida, there will be makos on the nations of the world. There will be something like Kriyas Yamsuf. Hashem will lead us through the Midbar. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar writes, Bekama Vekama Makoimos, that all the Nevi'im are Maskimim, they all can agree, Bepe'echad, that the miracles of Yitzhiya Mitzrayim are just the paradigm, the pre enactment of the miracles that will happen in the Gula Hasida. We're not remembering Yitzhiya Mitzrayim to remember something that happened 3,300 years ago. We're remembering Yitzhiya Mitzrayim in order to look forward to all the great things that will happen when Mashiach comes. Many people think, okay, now I have to stay up all night, drink wine, and think about ancient history. It's not about ancient history. It's about coming attractions. Every miracle that happened will repeat itself. Now, here's the important question. The miracles that happened at Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, were they greater than the miracles that will happen? Or are they smaller than the miracles that will happen? The Gemara tells us that the miracles of the Geulah Hasida will be so great, they will surpass in magnitude the miracles of Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, that pretty much when Mashiach comes, when people think about Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, they'll be like, yeah, old story, that boring story, that wasn't that important, that wasn't a big deal. That show was nothing compared to the miracles of La'asad Lavai. That's what the Gemara tells us. So therefore says the Ma'aral, when Mashiach comes, we're going to keep Pesach, we're going to keep Shavuos, we're going to keep Sukkot, but they won't be that significant because what they're remembering will be small and pale in comparison compared to the miracles of the Gula Hasida. So La'asid Lavai, all the Yom Tovim will become Batal. Listen carefully. The word Batal doesn't mean we won't observe them. It's like if a piece of non-kosher food falls into a pot of chicken soup, you're allowed to eat the chicken soup. The trafe is still there, it's just not significant. So too when Mashiach comes, any yomtif that remembers and commemorates open miracles will not be that significant. But Purim will always be significant. Let's try to explain how Purim is different than any other yomtif in the history of the world. I'll give you a para, I'll give you a mashal. I hope it's okay. So you have a couple. How do you know if their relationship is going to really last forever? Because everybody knows that in a relationship, it's never exactly the same every single day. If you have a friend, you have good days, you have bad days. Even in a marriage, there are good days and bad days. There are good days, there are better days. It's not always exactly the same. So if you see a chasen and a kala, a week after their chasana, they're happy with each other. Do you know that it's going to be lenetzach netzachim? No. Because it's good times. Could you determine based on sheva brachos how it's going to look forever and ever? No. How do you know? Now everybody's happy. They come. They come to a sheva brachos. The meal is waiting for them. And they have brand new clothing. Everything is on a silver platter. So of course, every, the relationship is wonderful. How do you know if a relationship is going to last forever? Let's say there's a little disagreement. And let's say they're not so happy with each other. And let's say even they're not talking to each other. If at that time, the wife cooks for her husband his favorite dinner. Or if the husband comes home and brings the wife her favorite thing, 
Ah, oh, now you know the relationship is forever. Because even on a bad day, you know that they're in it for the long haul. You know that no matter what happens, nothing is going to sever the tide. Nothing is going to separate them. Because even when things are not so good, they're still together. Says the Vilna Gain, this is the difference between Hanukkah and Purim. Is Hanukkah significant? Says the guy, not so significant. You know why? Big deal, Hashem made a miracle? Hishkayach, <laughs> the base of Mikdash is standing, we live in Eretz Yisrael, everything is wonderful. So Hashem makes miracles. On a good day, of course Hashem's going to make a miracle. Does that show that Hashem is with us forever and ever? You know what it shows? Nothing. Hanukkah is not really that important. When Mashiach comes, Hanukkah? Okay, Hanukkah. Hashem always made very great miracles for the Jewish people. Do you know how we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with Klal Yisrael forever and ever and ever? Then no matter what is going to happen, Hashem will always be with us. Beis HaMikdash was destroyed and Klal Yisrael was thrown out of Eretz Yisrael and now we're in Persia and Achashverosh made a Suda and Mordechai told the Yidin, don't you dare go to the Suda, you're endangering the national viability of Kal Yisrael. So you have, Beis HaMikdash is destroyed. We're in Galas. Mordechai said, don't go to the Suda. Actually, the worst Avera in the history of Kal Yisrael, anybody know? What was the greatest Avera in the history of Kal Yisrael? Cheir <laughs> Egal, yeah? Huh? Eating at the Suda of Achashverosh. Did we ever do an Avera that there was a threat against us? La Hashmid Laroy Goliabid? No. Only eating from the, the Suda of Achashverosh. What happened at that Suda when we were eating at the Suda of Achashverosh and Mordechai told us, don't eat from that Suda? Hashem was at that very moment paving the way. He got Achashverosh angry at Vashti so that if, so that Achashverosh will marry Esther. So that if the Yidin do tshuva, Hashem's going to save us. Says the Chassam Soifer, what is the miracle of Purim? You ever think about that? What's the miracle? We're having Yom Tif. What is the miracle? What miracle happened? That Achashverosh killed Vashti? Kings always did that to their wife. The fact that Achashverosh married Esther, that's the Yom Tif? What exactly is the miracle of Purim? Says the Chassam Soifer, the greatest miracle of Purim is that the Beis Hamikdash is destroyed. And we're kicked out of Eretz Yisrael. And we're committing the worst Avera in the history of the Jewish people. And what's the Rebbein Shalom doing? The Rebbein Shalom is paving the way for the Geula. You know what that demonstrates? That there is nothing that a Yid could do to sever his connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That it doesn't matter where we are, it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter whether there's a Beis HaMikdash. It doesn't matter whether we're in Eretz Yisrael. It doesn't even matter if we're doing mitzvahs or averos. At the end of the day, Tishuasam Hayisa Lanetzach. The Rebbe Hashem is with us. There was no other Yom Tif that demonstrated that. We were never so far gone. We were never so far from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And even then HaKadosh Baruch Hu came and He rescued us in the times of Mordechai the Esther. You know, you know what pantomime is? You know where you, you motion without saying anything? So the Gemara in Chagiga says that Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananya once had a pantomime match with a heretic. So the heretic motioned to Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananya, which meant Hashem turned his head away from you. Hashem is no longer with you. And Rabbi Shua ben Hananya motioned back to him, Oid Yadoy Natuya. His outstretched arm is still with us. What Rabbi Shua ben Hananya was telling this heretic was that even though in the Golos, in the times of Purim, Hashem's name is not in the Megillah, there is no open miracle. Nevertheless, the Zroya Natuya that was with us when we left Mitzrayim in concealment is still with us in the times of Purim. All the Yom Taivim will become battle. 
You want to tell me about the splitting of the Red Sea? I'll tell you one day we're going to say big deal. There's going to be a much greater, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe the whole Atlantic Ocean will split. We'll walk straight from the Statue of Liberty straight to Eretz Yisrael. And we'll say, Kriyas Yamsuf. What's Kriyas Yamsuf? Dam, Tzfardeya, whatever will happen when Mashiach comes, will be much, much greater than anything that ever happened by Yitzhak Mitzrayim. But nevertheless, the miracle of Purim will forever be significant. Because in the back of our mind, how do we know we're eternally connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? That there's nothing that could be done to sever our tie with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That we only know from Purim. No Beis HaMikdash, no Eretz Yisrael. We sinned, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu still bailed us out. And says Chsam Sofer, at the very moment that we were sinning, Hashem was already paving the way to bring the Gula for Klal Yisrael. Kishoshana bein hachoichem kein rayasi bein habanais. Does anybody remember? Kishoshana. What is a shoshana? A rose. When is Klal Yisrael compared to a rose? When we're bein hachoichem, when we're in the Golos. When we're in Eretz Yisrael, we are never compared to a shoshana. We are compared to a rose when we're bein hachoichem, when we're among the roses. Look very carefully, okay? Picture in your mind's eye. Kishoy Shana ends with what letter? Hey, Bain ends with what letter? Hachoychim ends with what letter? Haman. Haman. The Rishonim say, you know when we were like a Shoshana? Kishoy Shana in the times of Haman. That's when we were really surrounded by our enemy. That's when we were in real big trouble. When we're in Eretz Yisrael, we're a tulip. We're an orchid. It's in the Golos we're a Shoshana. What's the Gematria of Shoshana? 661, say the Rishonim. Esther is Gematria 661, Kishoshana. Now, Kal Yisrael has two names. Sometimes we're called Yaakov, and sometimes we're called Yisrael. The Ramban says, when are we called Yaakov, and when are we called Yisrael? Says Ramban, when we're on a low level, we're called Yaakov. When we're on a very high madrega, we're called Yisrael. Or the Malbim says, when Hashem deals with the Jewish people, B'derech HaTeva, we're called Yaakov. When Hashem deals with us with open miracles, we're called Yisrael. Do you remember the story with Elio and Har HaKarmel? When Elio took, who, who remembers what Elio did? Elio took 12 stones, he gathered them together, and before he made the fire come down from Shemayim, Elio said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you called Yaakov Yisrael. Okay, now make the fire come down. Rav David Koyen, not to be confused with what I mentioned before, Rav David Koyen is a Rav in Flatbush. Rav David Koyen, the Rashiva of Chevrain, says, why did Eliyahu invoke the name Yisrael when he was making miracles on Har HaKarmel? Because he's trying to make a miracle, he's trying to make a nace. With what Koyach does Hashem deal with Klal Yisrael, with Nisim Yisrael? Would it make sense to say, Shoshanas Yisrael? No, wrong Yamtif. We were not Yisrael in the times of Purim. We were Yaakov, we were on a very low level. Hashem was not making open miracles with us in the times of Purim. Hashem was making miracles in concealment, in hidden. That's why it's Shoshanas, because we're in the Golas. Yaakov! Why is it Teshuasam Hayisa Lanetzach? Because Pesach is not Lanetzach. Pesach we will not remember forever. Shavuos we will not remember forever. All the other Yom Toivim that commemorate open miracles, they will not be significant forever. Purim will forever be significant. That's the emphasis. Teshu Asam Hayisa Lanetzach. You know what this reminds me of? I always say the story. When my grandfather was taken to Dachau, he was waiting on a line and he was sent to the gas chamber. And he had one foot in the gas chamber and he was together with his brother, Uncle Hanach. And Uncle Hanach says to my grandfather, Martcha, 
Please, I need something to drink. I'm going to die of choking even before I get into the gas chamber. My grandfather said, we can't drink now. It will be a much more torturous death. And they were had one foot in the gas chamber and the last second the Nazi came, the Nazi yanked them out. And I always think, did the Nazi only yank out my grandfather? He yanked out my grandfather. He yanked out my father. He yanked out me. He yanked out my children. He saved us. It wasn't an open miracle. But in a way, it was a greater miracle. We all know that Rav Yaakov Emden writes, in the introduction to his Siddur, Rav Yaakov Emden writes, how can the heretic not be ashamed? Analyzing the situation of the Jewish people in the world. We the nation, the scattered sheep. After everything we, that transpired over the Jewish people. Rav Yaakov Emden writes, if you study the eternity of the Jewish people, that we made it through Haman, we made it through crusades, we made it through pogroms, we made it through inquisition, we made it through the Holocaust, says Rav Yaakov Emden, Chai nafshi, I swear, Rav Yaakov Emden says, he takes an oath, Ki when I think about the miracle of Jewish survival, they're much greater than all the miracles Hashem did for us when He took us out of Mitzrayim. So you know what that means? The day is going to come. We're going to say, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, eh, big deal. Kriyas Yamsuf, big deal. You know what a greater miracle is? The fact that you could come to a Beis Yaakov every single day in 2023 is a greater miracle than Kriyas Yamsuf. You know, when the Yidden were crossing the sea, the kids were like, Tati, you know, could we see a real miracle, like maybe a Beis Yaakov girl in 3,000 years? That would be, or then I would really have a moon. But right now, this is just Kriyas Yamsuf. We always think the other way around. We always think, you know, they used to live in times of great miracles. But we, no, just the opposite. The greatest miracle that ever happened in the world is the fact that we're here today. That's the miracle of Purim. That in the Golas, when we're Kishoshana, among many Choychim, and we're surrounded by Hamans, and we're not on the level of Yisrael, we're on the level of Yaakov, and we don't have a Beis HaMikdash, and we're not in Eretz Yisrael, and we may be Nana from the Sud of Achashverosh. And sometimes we think, you know, Hashem, of course, He loved my great, great Zaydas and Babas in Europe. But me, I'm on such a low level. The first step of Emuna is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's love for a Yid today is just as great, if not greater, than ever in history. And when a person davens today, Hashem is just as interested in that tefillah as anyone who ever davened. And if someone does a mitzvah today, it is just as dear. Actually, Rabbi Chaim Vital says that Arizal told him. Oh, yeah, Menaira. That Arizal told Rabbi Chaim Vital that Rabbi Chaim Vital is greater than Tanoim. So Rabbi Chaim Vital said, How could I be greater than a Tana? Says that Ari, if you would know how out of control the forces of Tuma are today, you would understand how a mitzvah you do is greater than the mitzvahs of the Tanoim. Now, can you imagine what that Rizal meant? That in Tzvas 500 years ago, the Koychus at Tuma were out of control? Imagine what that Rizal would say if he saw a year doing a mitzvah in America. If the, if the Koychus at Tuma were out of control 500 years ago in Tzvas, <laughs> you, can't, you can't even begin to imagine what would that Rizal say how valuable a mitzvah is today the miracle of Purim is the miracle of surviving the Golos which is a greater miracle than any miracles that ever happened Pesach will become insignificant that's what Chazal say Sukkot may become insignificant Purim will never wane Purim will never dull Purim will always be a great Yom Tif. And that's the great Simcha of, Yom, of Purim that Rizal writes, the oil of Shefa of Kedusha that came down of Purim 
was the greatest shefa of spiritual energy that the Rebbe Hashem ever brought down to the world. And that's something that occurs on every single Purim. So on this great day of Simcha, we should take advantage that all of our tefillahs should be mekat neskabel, barachem imavratzayin, and we should take great chizuk, whatever is taking place in the world, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is pulling the strings, and Be'ezus Hashem, Teshuasam Hayisa Lanetzach, Hashem should bring Yeshuais, V'nachamais, I wish you all, Bracha V'hatzlach, and all B'chol and Yonecha, thank you very much, have a Freil Chemparam. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.